from the historic Loretto Abbey Chapel. With the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents The Daily TV Mass. Welcome to the celebration of the Daily TV Mass. I'm Father Dan Donovan. The televising of this Mass is made possible by a contribution from the estate of Anna Dox. The Mass is offered for the repose of the soul of Anna. May her soul and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. Amen. The Catechism of the Catholic Church teaches us that the Christian meaning of death is revealed in the Paschal mystery, the mystery of the death and resurrection of Jesus. Today, we continue our month of prayer for those whose names are listed in our Book of Remembrance and for all the faithful departed. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Let us now acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Draw near to your servants, O Lord, and answer their prayers with unceasing kindness that for those who glory in you as their creator and guide, you may restore what you have created and keep safe what you have restored. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Revelation. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants that must soon take place. He made it known by sending his angel to his servant John, who testified to the word of God and to the testimony of Jesus Christ, even to all that he saw. Blessed is the one who reads aloud the word of the prophecy, and blessed are those who hear and who keep what is written in it, and for the time is near. From John to the seven churches that are in Asia, grace to you and peace. From him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, I heard the voice of the Lord saying to the angel of the church, in Ephesus write, these are the words of him who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks among the seven golden lampstands. I know your works, your toil, and your patient endurance. I know that you cannot tolerate evildoers. You have tested those who came to be apostles, but are not, and who have found them to be false. I also know that you are enduring patiently and bearing up for the sake of my name and that you have not grown weary. But I have this against you, that you have abandoned the love you had at first. Remember then from what, from what you have fallen, repent and do the works you did at first. If not, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place, unless you repent. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Those who are victorious, I will feed from the tree of life. Those who are victorious, I will feed from the tree of life. Happy are those 
those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or take the path that sinners tread, or sit in the seat of scoffers. But their delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law they meditate day and night. Those who are victorious, I will feed from the tree of life. They are like trees planted by streams of water, which yield their fruit in its season, and their leaves do not wither. In all that they do, they prosper. Those who are victorious, I will feed from the tree of life. The wicked are not so, but are like chaff that the wind drives away. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Those who are victorious, I will free from the tree of life. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord, Lord. As Jesus approached Jericho, a man who was blind was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard a crowd going by, he asked what was happening. They told him, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. Then he shouted, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Those who were in front sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he shouted even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and ordered the man to be brought to him. And when he came near, Jesus asked him, What do you want me to do for you? The man said, Lord, let me see again. Jesus said to him, because you receive your sight, your faith has saved you. Immediately he gave his sight, he gained his sight, and followed Jesus, glorifying God, and all the people, when they saw it, praised God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The first reading at daily Mass for these, the final three weeks of the liturgical year, is taken from the last book of the New Testament, the Apocalypse, or the Book of Revelation. A fascinating and dramatic book, it is full of images and symbols, many of which are anything but easy to understand. Today's reading contains a brief prologue and the first of seven letters addressed to Christian communities that have grown up in Asia Minor. The remainder of the book contains a series of visions, first of the heavenly world and of the liturgy which unfolds in it, and then of the events that will mark the end of time. The book comes to a climax with the defeat of Satan and the powers of darkness and the fulfillment of God's plan for human salvation. The letters have a prophetic quality about them. 
Jesus speaks to believers in the various churches, praising them for the good they have done and challenging them in regard to their failures. The first of the letters is addressed to the members of the church in Ephesus. After much that is positive, Christ turns to their failings and invites them to renew their faith and their commitment. I have this against you, he says, that you have abandoned the love that you had at first. Repent and do the works you then did. The situation in Ephesus is something that we can all understand. Most of us have seen in ourselves and in others the weakening of commitment, the falling off of love and enthusiasm of which Christ accuses the Ephesians. It might be in our family relationships, our friendships, in our responsibility to the broader society. Sustaining love and commitment over years is not something that just happens. It has to be consciously embraced, worked at, and strengthened. What is true of every other aspect of life is also true of our moral and religious life. It's no exaggeration to suggest that such a life is more challenging than ever for us who live in Western culture. The culture that surrounds us and that permeates our lives in so many ways is overwhelmingly secular. Its focus is so much on this world and on this life that God, Christ, and our ultimate destiny tend to recede from our consciousness. The result, to use the words of today's reading, is that we all too often abandon the love that we first had. At every Mass, the first scripture reading is followed by a few verses from one or other of the Psalms, the 150 songs and hymns that make up the biblical book of Psalms. They include songs of praise and thanksgiving, of trust and longing, songs in which we seek God's help or ask for forgiveness. Well, most of the Psalms are prayers of individuals. Some have a social dimension and give expression to the fears and concerns of the nation in the face of war or of natural disaster. Today's responsorial Psalm contains the first of the poems that make up the biblical book. Unlike most of the Psalms, it is not a prayer, but a reflection on the human condition and on the fundamental differences that exist between those who embrace the way of good and those whose lives are caught up in evil and sin. Happy are those, the Psalmist says, who do not follow the advice of the wicked or take the path that sinners tread, but their delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law they meditate day and night. Standing as it does at the beginning of the book, this psalm suggests that we should meditate on the psalms as devout Jews meditate on the law. In doing so, we will be able to fill our mind, our heart, and our imagination with the thoughts, feelings, and images we find in them. The object of meditation for Christians embraces not only the Psalms and the other books of the Old Testament, but also and especially the Gospels, the letters of Paul, and the rest of the New Testament. The word meditate suggests something more than simply reading a text. It requires us to stop, think about, and pray over what we are reading. The more time we are able to give to meditation, the more chance there is that it will help us, for example, to confront the challenges our culture presents us with as we try to live our faith in as authentic a way as possible. One can read today's gospel on different levels. 
The literal meaning describes the healing of a blind man by Jesus and the deep faith that impels the man to call out to Jesus in spite of the efforts of others to silence him. Once cured, he follows Jesus, glorifying God for the extraordinary gift he has received. The theme of blindness and the restoring of sight comes back a number of times in the Gospels. The Gospel of John in particular can help us understand the deeper meaning of a healing like the one in today's reading. John reports that Jesus once said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Many people in our culture are blind to the deeper dimensions of human life, blind as well to the divine love and mercy revealed by Jesus, blind to our unique dignity and value as children of God, redeemed by Christ and endowed with the gift of the Spirit. If we find ourselves losing sight of such things, we need, like the blind man, to cry out, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on us. Let us see again. Let us now in faith and trust present before God our needs. For all of us that are sharing in this Eucharist will renew our commitment to Christ and to one another. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For those listed in the Daily TV Mass Book of Remembrance, and for those who have died and have no one to pray for them, that the Heavenly Father may grant them eternal life and let perpetual light shine upon them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, do our prayer. For those who in any way are suffering from the COVID-19 disease and for those who are working to counteract its destructive impact, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, do our prayer. Gracious God, we ask you to hear and grant these prayers as well as the more personal ones that each one of us has in his or her own heart. All this we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Let the mingling of this water and wine become partakers of his partaker of our. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Wash me from my sins, cleanse me from my iniquity. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be made acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. And we accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the promise of the church. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him with great goodness you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore, we too extol you with all the angels, as in joyful celebration we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more, giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Bring them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. With those of you at home, join with me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you were already there, I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you. Permit not that I should ever be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. A company with constant protection, O Lord, those you renew with these heavenly gifts, and in your never-failing care for them, make them worthy of eternal redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks. Our thanks to our donor for the gift of this Mass. If you'd like to sponsor a Mass or share in sponsoring a Mass, please call our office at 1-888-383-6277 for details.